Hi and welcome to this 10th lecture in uh, this video series on Digital Forensics by me, Joachim Kjevrestad at the University of Skövde. Uh, and now we've reached the stage where we're moving away from the theoretical parts and going into the more practical uh, parts, uh, which are mainly going to be demos on uh, different access data products, beginning with FTK Imager. We will then go into the actual FTK, uh, Password Recovery Toolkit and Register Viewer. And uh, after that we will end with a demonstration on volatility. And there will also be a look into the open source forensic suite that's named SleuthKit and it's open source. Uh, um, and it's open source graphical user interface that's named Autopsy. Uh, but uh, beginning now with the FTK Imager that I'm viewing on screen, I just want to show you that uh, FTK Imager is a free program that you can download and use from the Access Data webpage. So if you just go to uh, accessdata.com slash product, product downloads, FTK Imager is right there. Um, you usually have to submit some information about yourself such as your email address and phone number to get a download link but it's a very good program for imaging and stuff like that that's free to use and um, so if i want to talk a little bit about how i use ftk imager in my everyday work as a forensic expert it's basically a program that uh, allows you to do some browsing of of the drive that you're examining and looking at files and recovering some deleted files but the main use for it, for it as I see it is to uh, well maybe do a first quick view at the disk you're examining but primarily to do a forensic disk image for later anal analysis uh, and it's also the go-to program for create, creating memory dumps and extracting uh, registry hives from any Windows system uh, okay, so let's have a look at how how it looks and begin with with uh, a very quick overview. But to make the overview uh, mean something to us, we will begin with going to File and uh, add evidence items so that we can have something in here. Uh, and as add evidence item, we can select to add a physical or logical drive. And a physical drive is when we add the entire drive as it is. Uh, and FTK Imager will read the drive from the first bit to the very last bit uh, and present it, present it to us in a hardware view, if you will. Um, logical drive is where we add a partition as seen by the computer we're examining. Uh, an image file, that would be if we want to uh, load an image file that we created previously, a forensic disk image, uh, and we can also select to add contents of a specific folder, which can be very useful if we're working with a big computer or something like that. But for now, let's add a physical drive, and we get a list of the physical drives that are connected to our computer, and I will just choose the default one and go finish, and, you can s and now we can make a meaningful overview of the FTK interface. So be beginning at the very top, we have a menu bar here uh, where we can begin with file and we have all sort of things that we can do here add evidence item which is what I just did we can choose to add all attached drives all drives that are attached to this specific computer uh, we can go image mounting which is basically a, a function where you can take an image that you created a forensic disk image and mount it in your computer and browse it using the the Windows file browser uh, remove remove uh, self-explanatory we have the create disk image which I will demonstrate later it's used for creating a forensic disk image from the uh, from what we're viewing within FTK at the moment uh, we can choose to the crypt an 81 image and 81 is a file format for um, for some type of forensic disk images uh, we can verify uh, drives use hash hash summation to verify that uh, an image is actually a correct image in regards to a specific hard drive. Uh, we can capture memory, uh, as we will do later, obtain protected files, which is extracting the Windows registry hives, um, and we can detect EFS, encrypted file system encryption, which I've never used. Uh, we have the view, which basically uh, is where you can decide what kind of paint you want to, you want to view. We have a mode, which I never used, and we have help, which contains a user guide. Uh, and with the buttons here, we have some 
quick buttons that we will explore a little bit later. But coming down to the panes where we actually see stuff, beginning with the top left, we have our evidence tree. And the evidence tree is similar in most forensic uh, products that I've used, in that you can browse uh, the file system of the hard drive that you're currently examining. And since we loaded this as a physical image, uh, whenever we're opening uh, a partition, FTK Mature will analyze and evaluate the partition tables and master boot records and all of that for each and every drive or for each and every partition. And that's why we saw uh, this progress bar where it said reading uh, MFT master file table. And that's what it does to populate the, the partition here. So um, that's the evidence tree where we can basically uh, browse what we what we see. There are a few interesting things here. Uh, to begin with, you see that, uh, as I marked here, you see uh, a, a partition name and a partition type for every partition. And directly beneath every partition, there is a root, which is the root of the file uh, file table and the root of the file tree for this partition. But you also see orphan, which is not populated for that drive. Maybe here there is something to view. Uh, orphan files are usually files that does not currently belong to a parent folder. So for some reason, uh, if the parent fol folder for a file is deleted or lost, the file will be considered an orphan file and th then it will be put into orphan as, uh, right here. Uh, carrying on, you see that we have another folder which is called unallocated space and this is where FTK maps uh, or FTK Imager maps all the drive space that is not uh, allocated to a file or uh, or a partition at the moment and every file here uh, represent a contiguous uh, a contiguous an allocated space uh, so this brings us to the top right pane which is the file listing uh, and basically this is where all files in the folder that you're currently viewing resides so if we're going to something interesting let's say we go to and that partition users uh, desktop and now we're, we are watching the desktop of, of a user here and you see that what's on that person's desktop resides here. Uh, the bottom right pane then is the data, the data pane where the content of a file is viewed uh, and you can see that for some files, let's say JPEG here, uh, you can see that uh, the file is viewed as it's supposed to be viewed, but if you're looking at something that's not possible for FTK Imager to view in a meaningful way, then you will see the raw data and you will see it in hexadecimal here. Um, in the middle, actually, you will see it in ASCII data on the right and you will see the offset, um, the offset values to the left. And that's basically it. And then to the to the bottom left we have another pane which basically contains a properties tab which will show you different properties such as file name, file type, file size uh, and more for for the files that's that is currently marked in the file listing up here. Uh, we also have a hex value interpreter and the hex value interpreter can be very good because using the hex value interpreter you can mark uh, a string here in the data field and uh, FTK Imager will try to interpret that uh, with a in, in different way here here to the left. Uh, for instance, if you find a, a timestamp or uh, or an integer or whatever, you can mark it uh, in hex hexadecimal, and FTK Imager will evaluate the real value for you. Uh, basically, the best way to go about and learn a program, I, I think, is to just try it out and do different things. But where I'm going to show you how to do some of the more common tasks in FTK Imager. Uh, and as I said, perhaps the most common part is to actually create disk images with it. So how do you do that? Well, uh, to begin with, you import uh, a drive as, as we've done now and why why do you want to import a drive well you want to see that you're imaging the correct drive and you want to see that it is not uh, encrypted or something like that so you import a drive and you browse it about a little bit just as we've done now and then when you know that this is a drive that I want to uh, export as a forensic disk image well then you right click the drive up here 
uh, and you go to export disk image. You can also do this from file, uh, disk Im export disk image, or from one of the little buttons up here. I always forget which one it is. Here, export disk image. So mark that, export disk image, and this will take us to the image creation menu. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is show us where to put it, and it's basically the save location. So we press add here to get to uh, where we want to save our disk image. And the first thing we have to decide upon is what type of image, uh, which is basically the file format that we want for our disk image. Uh, and then we can choose raw, which is basically a DD dump, which is, well, a raw bit stream of the image we want. Smart, which is a format I, I never used and don't remember really what it is either. Uh, we have AFF, which is advanced file format, which supports encryption and good stuff. And there is uh, EO1, which is the expert witness format, which is basically the standard format to use at least for criminal investigations. So you hit decide on your file format and hit next. What I can give you here is as a tip is that if you're working on a case uh, where you're going to image a drive and it seems to fail for whatever reasons, maybe you get write, uh, read write errors or, or such from the disk, then you can go by, uh, or I found that doing a raw dump uh, is your best bet when you know that you're going to get a broken image. Uh, in my experience, a DD dump is the best way to image a broken drive when you want to get as much as possible. The other file format seems to fail miserably uh, much more frequently. So, but for now, e EO1, and then we want to input some case data, such as the number of the case we're working on, the identifier for the evidence that we're working on, if there is uh, some unique description, sort of where it was placed or something like that, and the name of the examiner. I I'll leave those blank for now and hit next. Uh, in the final step, we sh select our image destination folder, where, which is where we want to put our drive uh, or our forensic image. I'm putting it in a new, vol new volume cases. That will be good. OK. And the file name that we want, test image, uh, miserably spelled. Uh, the fragment size, and the fragment size decides because when you're imaging using FTK image or most other imaging programs, the resultant image will be saved in fragments, so it will be split up uh, into chunks of data. And this is where you select on the size of each chunk. And this can be very important uh, if you're using, uh, if you're storing the image in uh, in a storage location which has a file system like uh, FAT that doesn't support very big files, then you need a smaller file. But it can also be easier to manage the, manage the image if it's not like one big chunk of data. I mean, if, you work, if you're imaging a one terabyte drive, then it will virtually be a one terabyte file as your image file if you're not fragmenting it. So we're going by the default. Uh, next we have compression, which is uh, where you input a number uh, that decides how compressed you want your uh, image to be, where zero would mean no compression at all, and nine would mean compress it as small as possible. And what you want to know here is that the the more compression you add, the smaller the resultant image will be, but at the same time, the longer the the imaging process will be. So uh, nine means smaller, but also a longer time to image, but zero means no compression and faster to image. I'll leave the default and hit finish. And now uh, we've basically done everything that we need to do and we can press start to start the imaging process. But there is one more thing that I want to notify you on and th that is uh, the verify images after they are created, with, which is checked here. And that is basically an option that makes FTK imager create uh, hash values of the drive that you're imaging and it will then create hash values of the resultant disk images and compare those two uh, in order to ensure that the image that you're creating is in fact an identical copy of the source drive. So when you want to start the imaging process, hit start. I'm not going to do that, so I will click cancel instead. Uh, what we did now was that we created a physical disk image, and that's because we imported our drive as a physical drive here. Uh, however, uh, in some cases you want to do what is known as a logical disk image as in instead. 
Uh, and remember that I said a physical disk image or a physical view of the disk is where you let FTK Imager mount the physical disk and evaluate and look at the disk uh, in a physical manner from the first bit to the very last. Uh, but in some cases, that's not what you want to do because that physical view may be encrypted. So instead you want to view the disk as the computer views the disk and then you can do it in a logical way so I'm going to show you here if we go file add evidence item and we go logical drive instead and hit next then the listing that we will get is a list of the partitions that are present on the machine that we're examining so let's take uh, C colon and finish what we get now is a view of the partition the C colon partition as the computer sees it and um, there is a drawback to this in that we will not be able to uh, access as much slack space um, and raised areas but the thing is that if we're working on a compu computer that's encrypted when it's when it's turned off then this logical disk view is the only chance we have to view it in a decrypted state and so now that we mounted uh, C colon here as a logical drive, the imaging procedure is exactly the same as it was as it was before. We uh, mark the partition, we go export disk image, and then we go about our work, and then it's exported as a logical disk image. Uh, so finally, I want to show you uh, two other great functions of FTK Imager, where the first is to create a memory dump of the computer you are examining. And you can create a memory dump by hitting the little memory button up here that looks sort of like a comb. Hit that, and then you basically have to show a destination path and place it wherever you want. And then you go capture memory. Uh, when you're doing the memory dump, you can choose to include or uh, to extract the page file from the computer that you're examining. Remember that a page file is sort of an area where the computer puts memory pages when it doesn't have room for them in, in the physical memory, the RAM. Uh, however, what you need to know here is that if you're imaging the computer, uh, then you're getting the page file because the page file is located on the hard drive. Uh, however, if you're not, if you're just extracting memory and volatile data, then you may want to include a page file here as well. Uh, so that's that. Uh, finally, you can choose to create an AD1 file, which is an access data file format for uh, forensic images, if you like to. Uh, otherwise, you will just get the memory dump as um, as a raw data dump. So now that you sh selected the destination path, you may choose to. Uh, modify the destination file name, then you go about capture memory and that's all. Uh, finally, uh, you have the little yellow box up here that's obtain protected files and that's what you use in that, that's what you want to use if you want to extract reg extract registry hives from the computer you're examining. Uh, if you want to do that, click the yellow box and then you basically just have to press uh, browse to select where you want to put uh, registry hive files and then there is two options uh, the first one that is pre-selected is to extract minimum files for logon password recovery uh, that basically covers the salmon system uh, the salmon security hives uh, but if you want to extract all registry hives you choose you should choose uh, password recovery and all registry hives and in my experience the registry hives are uh, pretty small files and re really quick to extract so as long as there is no legal matter with extracting them all that that's what you should do click OK to extract the registry hives and then you're done and that's all for my demonstration on access data FTK uh, imager and I will see you next time when it's time for one of the more hardcore programs where you can do real forensic analysis